When it comes to making money with Uber and Lyft, and especially making a lot of money, one of the number one techniques is to make sure you're driving at the right time. So in this video, I'm talking about the five best times to drive for Uber and Lyft. Number one, the primary peak hours. Now these are the most cliche you're gonna hear all the time, and they are morning commutes, evening commutes, Friday and Saturday nights. Now overall, it does depend city to city if you're curious about, well, what is the best exact time to drive for the morning commute, evening commute, Friday and Saturday nights? I would suggest overall about 7 to 9 a.m. in the morning, 5 to 7 p.m. in the afternoon or evening. And then when it comes to Friday and Saturday nights, I'd say probably around 9 p.m. to about 2 or 3 a.m. on a Friday and Saturday night. Number two, secondary peak hours. So these are hours that a lot of other drivers don't think about. However, you could still make a good amount of money and depending on the day, depending on what's going on, I've sometimes made more money in the secondary peak hours than the primary peak hours. What I'm talking about are the pregame hours and Saturday and Sunday during the day. So the pregame hours are a great option. Let's like say if you don't want to drive around drunk people. I've had so many drivers say, hey, Mark, is there any good time to drive where I don't have to deal with drunk people? I'd say a Friday and Saturday from 5 p.m. till about 9 p.m. And what you're doing is you're driving people as they're going to their friend's place. So they're not drinking yet, but they're getting ready to, right? They're going to their friend's place. They're going to pregame. They're going to go out. And you'd be surprised how much money you can make during the pregame hours, especially on a Friday. You're almost getting the intersection of people leaving work on a Friday. They're excited. They're getting ready for the weekend. And you have people getting ready to go out to go to their friend's place. Do not sleep on the pregame hours. Another great option when it comes to secondary hours, like I said as well, is Saturday and Sunday during the day. I find that a lot of people are maybe going out, you know, obviously they're, they're not working, so they're going to their friend's place, they're going to an event. Another thing as well is people leaving their friend's place to come back home. So let's say they go out on a Friday night, they have a crazy night, they sleep at their friend's place, they wake up Saturday, they need an, uh, an Uber and Lyft to get home. These are great secondary peak hours that you can make a lot of money. Number three, city hours. Now this depends city to city, hence the name of it. And what I'm talking about is some cities, if you drive during a certain time frame, you're not gonna make that much money. Other cities, if you drive during the exact same time, you can make a good amount of money. One classic example is Vegas. If you drive pretty much at any point in time in Vegas, you're almost guaranteed to make a, a good amount of money. People are out during the day and the night. Vegas is Vegas, right? So Tuesday at 1 p.m. in Vegas, you could probably make a good amount of money. Tuesday at 1 p.m. in Boston, not so much. Another great example is Thursday nights. Now in Boston, which is a massive college area, there's, I think it's like 20 plus colleges in this one small radius. You can make a lot of money on a Thursday night because it's Thursday, Thursday. All the, the uh, college kids are going out. They're going to have a crazy time on a Thursday night. That's a great time to make a lot of money. Here in LA though, on a Thursday night, not so much. I feel like you can't really make as much money on a Thursday night here in LA, give it to a Thursday night in Boston. This depends city to city. This is something you definitely want to test out. Take even midday. I know people have told me that during, let's say lunch hour, like 12 p.m. to 2 p.m., they actually can make sometimes a good amount of money because people are going to lunch. They're bouncing around or whatever. In Boston, I found it was probably the worst time to drive during that lunch hour, so to speak. This is something you want to test out because it depends city to city. Number four, events hours. Any single time there's a big event in your area, you are almost guaranteed to make a lot of money. The Super Bowl is happening this weekend here in LA. If you're a driver here in LA, you're gonna you're gonna crush it in terms of how much money you can make. I remember in Boston, let's say there was a lot of graduations going on. There was one time, it was all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday, a bunch of graduations. The surges were off the charts and I made a good amount of money. I definitely suggest looking on the Lyft app is a great example of this. I've already done a video, but on the Lyft app, it will show you some events going on, whether it's, you know, a sports game going on, like a baseball game, a football game, whatever. Let's say there's a concert. Let's say there's a big convention going on in your area. Any single time there's a big event, all these kind of best times to drive, worst times to drive mentalities go out the window because if there's a lot of people and they're going into an event, does not matter the time of the event, you are guaranteed to make a lot of money. Number five, early morning hours. I know drivers who swear by this. I just, I can't do it. But the idea is you wake up around 
3.34 a.m. and drive till about 10 a.m. So what you're really doing is these super early morning hours where people are going to the airport. Maybe if it's a crazy, crazy night, they're just getting back from the nightclub or an event. You know, I mean, it's tough to say exactly, but I know so many drivers who swear by this saying, hey, Mark, I'm not going to lie. I make the most amount of money in my area starting at 4 a.m. I drive from 4 a.m. to then 7-ish a.m. Then I hit the morning commuting hours. I drive for a few more hours. So about 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. I get done with my day at 10 a.m. I'm done with work. Now I can do whatever I want for the entire rest of the day. The idea of, to me of waking up at 3.30, maybe even 3, to start driving for five or six hours, I just can't do it, but I know a lot of drivers who swear by this. And now a bonus time to drive are static hours. Now I have a massive asterisk on static hours. Here is the reason why. This comes down to one thing. Are you an independent contractor or an employee? I've talked about this before in a lot of other videos, but this has been a big debate whether it is state to state here in America, country to country, even different continents are now making rules about rideshare drivers because it is a gray area. Are you an independent contractor or an employee? And one of the clauses when it comes to you turning into an employee that does happen in your given area is you are guaranteed a minimum hourly guarantee. Meaning if you drive and let's say you make no money, you don't even get any rides, you still get a minimum amount. So for example, take Boston, like I said before, Tuesday at 1 p.m., you can make, you're pretty much gonna make nothing. I remember when I drove and I tested it out, and I think I did one ride and I made like $4. So I made $4 in one hour. Four bucks an hour, I'm not gonna lie, I'd rather do something else. And that doesn't even factor in like taxes and depreciation, et cetera, et cetera. However, let's say for some reason in Boston, you are now an employee and it's minimum 15 an hour. Well, Tuesday at 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., yeah, maybe you're not gonna make that much money because there's gonna be no rides, but with that employee situation put into place, now you're guaranteed minimum 15 an hour. I mean, if anything, if you have a minimum hourly guarantee during the midday, you're probably almost hopefully banking on not getting any rides because that's way less gas, way less depreciation, et cetera, et cetera. This is something just to look out for because let's say you're like, Mark, you know, I should make some side cash with Uber and Lyft and you're trying to figure out when the best time to drive is. If you turn into an employee or if there's some unique clause or proposition that's put in your area, hey, if you have a minimum, you know, threshold and Lyft and Uber will bump you up to that. So no matter what you're making, minimum 15 an hour or whatever the case is, I'm just using that as a random number. All these kind of peak hour things kind of get thrown out the window because yes, you can make more than that, which is great during the peak hours. But let's say if you can't drive during the peak hours, your schedule is kind of random. Hey, drive anytime you want, guaranteed that minimum hourly guarantee.